Yeah, you started using Edge, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I've been on Edge for maybe six months now. The dev tools are the best. Wait, what? The Syntax Podcast has hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and Wes Boss is claiming that Microsoft Edge has better developer tools than Google Chrome. As we all know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and there's nothing more extraordinary than saying you use Microsoft Edge. Is it true that Edge is killing Chrome and taking over as the dominant browser for web developers? Let's find out. At first glance, there appears to be about 20 additional developer tools in Edge, as you can see in the drop-down menu. But many of these tools are present in Google Chrome, but are hidden by default. You can access them using the search function or by digging deeper into the menus. Shoutouts to Microsoft for making the tools more discoverable. So which tools are unique to Microsoft Edge? We can partition the tools into three categories. The Chrome Visible category includes all the tools that most developers know about, even if they don't know how to use them. The Chrome Hidden category includes all the tools that Google doesn't show by default. The interesting part for us is the third category, Edge Exclusive, which includes the new tools that Microsoft added. Let's go through these tools one by one to see what they do and whether they're useful. To test the developer tools on a real-world example, I'll be using Thumbnail Gun, a YouTube thumbnail previewer that I built. First up is the 3D view. The visualization it produces looks really cool. Imagine going into a meeting and showing this to your teammates. You would win so many style points. One use for this 3D view is finding unnecessary component renders. The thumbnail grid should immediately stand out to you as a performance red flag. There are thumbnails being rendered below the viewport that we can't see, but still use up resources. If there were thousands of thumbnails in the grid, updating the thumbnail preview would take several seconds. The same concept also applies to other elements, like text fields. For example, if we type something really long into the video title text field, we can see how it extends all the way off the right side of the screen in the 3D view. Finally, the 3D view tool shows the number of repaints that occur in the browser as you interact with the web page. Scrolling down on the page causes repaints to occur. If your web page lags when the user is scrolling, the repaint count can be helpful for debugging. Before moving on, you might be asking yourself something. Why doesn't Google copy the 3D view tool from Edge? There are two reasons for this. The first reason is that even though Chromium is an open source project, Microsoft Edge is not, despite having a public GitHub repository with no code in it. The second reason is that the 3D tool is actually just a reskin of the Layers tool from Chrome. As you can see, the tools are almost identical, except that Chrome doesn't have the pretty pink and purple stacking visualization. Okay, next up is the Network Console tool. At first glance, the Network Console appears to be a cheap Postman clone. And, well, yes, basically it's a cheap Postman clone. I can see what they're going for with this tool, since it would be very nice to use the web browser as an integrated development environment when building websites. We'll send a request to google.com. And nothing happened. Maybe we need to put HTTPS in the URL. Still nothing. What about www.google.com? Hmm. Since I'm currently on thumbnailgun.com, let's send a request to that URL. It's still not working. I got it working when I tried recording this demo the first time, but now it only gives me a vague error message. Let's pretend that it worked. Now we want to save our request for later. Okay, that seems to have worked. But now there is a blank spot where I expect to see my saved request. I can still click on it and open it, but how will I find anything if I have multiple requests? Overall, I would strongly recommend using a dedicated tool like Postman for sending HTTP requests. The next developer tool we're going to be looking at is the Crash Analyzer tool, which has the same icon as the Network Console tool. They were too lazy to make a new icon, so they copied the sensors icon instead. I don't know what I'm looking at here. Let's see what the documentation says. In the Crash Analyzer tool, you can input a JavaScript stack trace that you collected in production and then have your source maps applied to unminify the stack trace so that you can debug faster. So basically, it's budget Sentry, which is ironic because Wes Boss currently works for Sentry. The first time I tried using this tool, this is what happened. The Crash Analyzer crashed my browser. 
I think your job is safe, Wes. Microsoft even wants you to npm install a package into your source code to take full advantage of this crash analyzer tool. And you are seeing that correctly. This package got exactly one download this week. Let this be a lesson to all you developers out there. If you can get just two people to download your npm package, you're already doing 100% better than Microsoft. Our next Edge exclusive tool is the Source Maps Monitor. I really like the icon for this one. Okay, where do I get started? Is this like one of those magic eye things? Do I stare into the center of the screen until I see something? The documentation says it's supposed to monitor which source files on your web page requested loading of source maps. But even when I'm running a development build on localhost, it doesn't show anything. The final Edge exclusive developer tool is the Detached Elements tool. It says it's new, so I'm excited to see what Microsoft is cooking up here. Oh. It's deprecated since Google added the functionality to the memory tool in Chrome. As an aside, I find it funny that I can't press the plus button anymore. See how it's overlapped with the triple dots button? They probably didn't anticipate anyone using the developer tools with such a low resolution display. And I guess that's it for Edge exclusive developer tools. While Wes Boss may be edging his way through 2025, I think for better or worse, the web has climaxed with Chrome. Leave a comment below with any features you would like to see added to Thumbnail Gun. And I'll implement them and make a video showing off all the little Easter eggs I built in. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.